Well, thank you for coming to class. Welcome to Contemplative Writing with Christina Amalong. I'm Allie Laceman. <laughs> um, first, we're going to start off class with a bow to welcome us all into the space. Okay. Now we're going to do some toning. So sit straight up in your chair, stretch out your diaphragm a little bit. And if you'll meet me in toning for about 30 seconds, I'll start to push my hands down when we're getting to the end of it. So feel free to let your voice out there. Nice guys. Sounds like a sounds like a chorus in here. <laughs> um, okay, so Ali, excuse me. Yes. That, that those color of flowers are so becoming to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I feel like a flower. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, well, do we want to enter in the space a little bit? Let's just check in how we're all doing today, and then we'll go into some meditation. So, um, Lynn and Chris, I don't believe you got to say anything about your space. So, Lynn, do you, how are you feeling today? What, what's um, up? Mm -hmm. I'm in the, the middle of some shifts um, um, with my coaching business. Mm -hmm. So, I am feeling um really good about the shifts that i'm making yeah feels good that is, that is good it sounds yeah. good it, yeah. <laughs> you're radiant oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah christine how are you doing today well i oh is it christine or christine you go ahead christine actually oh okay you, it's christine but my old email is Christina. I've been called both, but it keeps coming up as Christina, and then I change it. So were you asking me or Christine? Um, I was pointing out to Chris Jean, but you okay. feel free to enter yeah, into the space. Go, go ahead. That's fine. Well, I have been going through um, a big shift, too, but unfortunately it has to do with my business and my work. I wish I had more time to devote to Universal Amore uh, Universalis. I, um, I, I shifted partners, <laughs> work partners, from one to another overnight. And it's a big deal. Uh, and I haven't had a great deal of sleep. But when I can't sleep, I read Barbara. And um, so that's how I'm spending uh, my time um, with Womo. I have to say Womo because I speak Italian. <laughs> Womo of Universalis. Thanks. Ooh, I like that. That's it. Is it does feel like a time of a transition right now? I feel like I know in my life, and from what you guys have said in a lot of your lives. So really bringing that into today's code. I feel, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, does anybody else want to put anything to the space before we meditate? Okay. Well, then we'll meditate for five minutes. I'll start us off with the bell.
Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say after that, that it's really lovely to be here with you ladies. And I'm very happy to be in this space. Um, now, a little bit about writing. I'll read the code to you and then we'll have 20 minutes today to dive into it. Guide the metamorphosis of your earthly self with the coding of your universal self. Practice self-evolution in the imaginal realm by calling forth the image of your full potential self incarnate as a whole being. After contact with the universal self, there is a period of consolidation. Place the attention of the body, the local self and the essential self on the universal self. The universal self can then consolidate and integrate all of those aspects of your being as a whole being. When you get the image of your whole being and hold it there in the field, the universal self can fuse with essence, transforming all of your local selves into higher, more aligned frequency. Okay. I'll give us 20 minutes to write, and then I'll ding the bell and we'll take a five minute break.
it's time for our five minute break. So continue writing, get up and stretch, whatever you'd like in the space. I'll see you in five minutes. Okay, welcome back. Does anybody feel the burning desire to go first today for our feedback sessions? Um, I can go first. Awesome. Okay. So. Universal self. I consider it more of my true self with a capital T. This is where we are all connected. The core of everyone is the same. Moving from the local self, ego, takes constant vigilance. These past few years, I felt as though I was helping myself and my finances by deciding not to withhold taxes from my distribution up to a certain point. In reality, I was hurting myself, telling myself that I would not be able to make enough in my coaching business, creating lack and limitation. Lack and limitation are not part of my universal self. I release them and move fully into the knowledge that I am a highly successful financially abundant life coach. Saying that in the past did not create a shift for me. Now it does. This is the coding I am integrating. I am consolidating the codes of my universal self to push out and replace all that is not me. Again, the Chopra meditation from today aligns with the code for this week. My awareness is aligned with my creative, with the creative power of the universe. Stay in this place, stay in this knowledge, knowing, becoming, living from my truth, universal truth. Constant vigilance to stay there, stay awake more often. And then when I do fall asleep, wake up sooner to the truth really believe and live from that truth, not just words. Words don't help if I act out of sync with them continuously. Metamorphosis happens from this shift. The knowing, really deeply knowing. Where else have I been asleep at the wheel and thinking I was fully awake and aware? My physical space, clutter, my yard, I've claimed the pool is my own, yet I don't swim in it. I don't enjoy it. It becomes a burden in, instead, a job, instead of, instead of a joy. I don't want to own a burden anymore. I don't want to undermine my success. I am here to give my gifts freely, not keep them cloaked in the veil of lack disguised as practicality. Practical is never freeing. Living, being who I've come here to be. I release practical and become me, my true universal self. And then when I was on the break, I started getting emotional, feeling like I would, wanted to cry. I, I feel as though I'm mourning the release of the ego and my limiting old self for my true self. Wow. Thank you, Lynn. Would you like feedback? Yes, please. Would anybody like to go first? I would. Um, I really had to kind of keep my eyes open and keep reminding myself that you weren't talking where I wasn't talking. <laughs> um, and because I'm influenced by what's going on in me, I'll use an analogy that I felt 
throughout everything you said was caterpillar, butterfly, caterpillar, butterfly, caterpillar, butterfly. That there were so many places that you are doing that metamorphosis from the caterpillar to the butterfly. It's not just one caterpillar life into a butterfly, but little caterpillar transformations. And so I felt the energy as you were in the caterpillar, old caterpillar thinking of limitation and moving into the energy of abundance. It was like this. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Christine, would you like to go would you like to give some feedback? Wait, sorry. There am I good now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I totally agree with Patty and it was very helpful for me too with what's going on with me. I, I love how you uh, are just claiming it. You're just claiming it. And uh, I think that's what we need to do because it is very tricky and, and we're not getting that reflected back to us in much of the world to do exactly what you're doing. And uh, it, it's like you're opening your arms to the abundance that that is there, it's just waiting to rush to you instead of the way most of us have our arms closed. Um, so, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, that was great feedback. Christine? Yeah. Very profound and- uh, There we go really, really appreciate it. I think that perhaps you uh, are also living alone after having had a family the way I am. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Yes. But taking care of a home and a pool, um, I, I give you all strength. Get rid of it all. <laughs> like you don't need that. You don't need that problem. You're absolutely right on when you say you want to... Um, don't want to own um practical is never freeing i loved that practical is never free. it's not what you want you don't want to be practical um you want to become you <laughs> and uh, that's what we're all doing and i certainly appreciate your honesty and uh, openness thanks thank you Yes, Lynn, I, uh, I pulled out a few quotes from that that I really liked. Um, I really liked how you said my universal self, my true self with a capital T. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, where we are all connected, moving from the ego takes constant vigilance. It really, it really does. I really resonate with that. It's a constant like looking at yourself and look like without judgment, with awareness to move forward. And that is, it takes some vigilance. Um, I release practical and become me. It's again, it's letting go of that. It's letting go of that ego self. It's all about that. And I, I'm really at a point in my journey where a lot of that reflects towards me. And so I felt like your writing, it really hit that spot right here. Christine said a, a good metaphor of like the closed arms to the open arms. Like, I feel like I'm like, hey, <laughs> but you showed so many beautiful examples of you just opening up to the world. And that takes bravery. So thank you, Lynn. Yeah, thank you. Who would like to read next? Or Lynn, would you like to say anything about your writing? No, I just, um, I was kind of processing as I was writing even, so it was good. 
That is good. I remember uh, in a past uh, session that you had said that sometimes you like to pre-plan these things uh, just because it's habit. And so yeah. it's to hear that your presence in this, that's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's another constant vigilance is to not, because um, I knew I was going to be here today and what the code was and to just not, not practice, not do anything, just let it flow as, as I was writing. Yeah, it really, your writing was very strong. So it's working for you. <laughs> Who would like to uh, read next? I'll go. Awesome. Thanks, Patty. First, I want to say, because I've journaled, I don't know if I would have noticed this any other part of today. Today is 8818. Ah. Just wanted to share that. Okay. These codes are my blueprint guiding me from who I have believed myself to be to who I really am. I am moving from the caterpillar into the butterfly. I am seeing more through the lens of my butterfly self and choosing from who I really am. I am doing only what I want to do and what feels good. And that's definitely coming from who I really am. I'm seeing how I've been taken care of and how my life has been directed and guided. And I'm grateful. Seeing and appreciating that comes from who I really am. I'm seeing that living from who I really am is very different from who I believed myself to be. I know what the two worlds feel like energetically. And really it's the same as the old world and the new world paradigm. The shifts I'm experiencing personally are the same shifts happening in everything on our planet. We are all moving from the caterpillar to the butterfly. And we all have different stages of the caterpillar life and different stages of the emerging butterfly. That's as far as I got. Thank you, Patty. Would you like feedback? Sure. Would anybody like to give feedback first? Christine? Yeah. Um, yeah, I really love that you said that you're doing only what you, what you want to do and what feels good, and that's who you really are. Like making that connection, like... It's so opposite of what women <laughs> are supposed to do, you know? And it's so powerful. Um, wow, it just helps give, it's inspirational because I need to do more of that. And I just never made that connection because of course, if you do what you really want and what's fun to you, and feels good, then of course you're gonna be more and more who you are because your resonant frequency is gonna go way up and that's where you are. <laughs> yeah. And then your, your ability to attract is just gonna be off the charts. It's just gonna have probably, have a, I mean definitely have a cumulative effect. So I'm very happy for you. And I, I love that. I'm actually, on these notes, I'm actually going to take these quotes and hang them on my wall from everybody's writing because <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> I'll call you if I'm going to publish them. You can get, you know, residual checks in the mail. Okay. <laughs> that was really sweet. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Um, Lynn, would you like to give some feedback? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that you're talking about your, your blueprint because there really is, you, you need to have that blueprint before you can move forward. And then again, you're, you're like you were talking about me moving the butterfly or the caterpillar to the butterfly and realizing that everybody is at a different stage of their caterpillar and their, their butterfly. And then I like to, 
close to the end where you were talking about your emerging butterfly. Mm. So I see that your emerging butterfly is, is beautiful and... Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Lynn. Christine, would you like to give some feedback? I would just a few words um, in addition to what everyone else has said, with which I agree. I was especially touched by your mention of being grateful for being guided. Uh, I don't think that's something I have uh, really digested yet. And uh, I think that's a very important part of this whole process. So I thank you for bringing that up. And I can't read the end of my note, but I want to. It says, identifying with what is going on to be, uh, identifying with what is going to come in the future. Was that what you were saying? I'm sorry. I, I just, in, in, in any case, um, I appreciate those um, grateful parts of recognizing how you got it. That's all. Thanks. Yeah, to add on to a little bit of what Christine was saying, that uh, that gratefulness for being guided, it really like completes that circle of like someone who guides you and like you accepting this experience, then you looking back at the experience mm -hmm. and then the gratefulness. <laughs> That's a beautiful cycle. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, choosing from who I really am, uh, from the butterfly self. I love how you're continuing forward with the butterfly metaphor. I think that that's really beautiful. You could, exactly like Christine said, you could write a book, publish it, you know, let's, let's do this. <laughs> um, shifts I am experiencing personally, the whole planet is experiencing that whole perspective of taking it from like out of yourself and like, you're so right. Everything changes. Everything's experiencing these shifts. And it's like the awareness and the experience that we put behind it. And there's a lot of, uh, of noting of that journey in your writing, of the experience, of the awareness, of seeing where you're at. And that's really cool to see. So um, I also really liked the, this isn't an exact quote, but seeing uh, living from who I really am is different than what I thought. Uh, <laughs> I, that resonates with me a lot. I, uh, just to share a little personal blip, just moved into my own apartment and I had this little imagination of myself like, okay, you are an independent woman now, you know? <laughs> it's, it doesn't just happen like that. It's not, <laughs> it's all a process. And uh, so seeing who you really am and just living through that is a beautiful thing. Thank You're you, welcome. Patty. <laughs> you. Do you have anything that you would like to share about your writing? Um, I guess because it was mentioned a couple of times, maybe just an explanation of the appreciation of being guided um, and knowing and seeing that I spent my life being very disappointed with my parents because I thought it was their job and I was looking to them for guidance on how to be a human being, which included learning how to love. And in looking back at my life, what I realized I was being guided all along, I was just looking at the wrong guides, or what I thought should be the guides, when in truth, I was guided. I just thought I wasn't because I was looking in the wrong direction. So that's so much awareness of wow I have been taken care of and didn't get particular jobs or this door didn't open or whatever I can see the guidance but that's that's the gift of age 
<laughs> Don't ever hear too many gifts about age, but that's a gift of age, hindsight. <laughs> See where all your puzzle pieces fit together? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Thanks for that, Patty. Being <laughs> older than you are. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could go, Ali. That'd be great. Thank you, Christine. I picture my self-evolution as different vessels of myself floating in space. At a distance still is my universal self, a rather large alabaster urn, shining white in the distance. My attention and focus is toward this alabaster sphere, and I, still as local self, or to be honest, still more than one local self, in small grayish containers, like vases with three feet, each beginning to do a better job of balancing on their three legs. No more do two of the three legs get off balance as in the past, leaving confusion and fear. If off balance these days, the gray vases or vases manage to stay on two of the three feet. My attention now these days is thankfully more with the essential self, which appears as a multicolored sphere in which I am able to rest more and more. I feel my essence just within reach. And as I lift my brown, gray, egoic selves into this multicolored sphere, I am feeling the pull of my alabaster urn, my universal self, tipping toward me in all my splendid colors, pulling my essence, which now encompasses my body and local self. The pull is gentle, nothing abrupt or harsh, and yes, I feel the beginning of a fusion. Now I am able to stay in my essence long enough to feel the pull and comfortable enough in this field space. And presently uh, ready to fuse and shine my alabaster self. <clears throat> Universalis di amore <laughs> with a huge desire to complete so that I might share with any and all. Wow, thank you, Christine. Would you like feedback? Sure. Okay, does anybody want to start off with the feedback? Um, I can start if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I liked your whole analogy about the uh, vessels floating in space and the, your universal self was this large alabaster urn and you were these small gray containers and with three legs and very often you were off balance and now you were much more in balance. And, and then the, the multicolor sphere. Uh, and I also um, love that that the uh, you were tipping toward the splendid colors and beginning to fusion and you are ready to fuse and shine your alabaster self and then share with any and all so that was i love that the sphere analogy with the colors and the blending and so Thanks. thank you <laughs> thank you lynn yeah i uh, that was a lot of imagery. It was really beautiful. I kind of imagined up in space, uh, there's your sphere, right? The essential self. And then these other urns or vases as they're coming towards each other with the fusion of essence. It's, it looks like a star. 
It looks like a star, Jean. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, and all the colors, I feel like they're very metaphoric. And there's a part of me that really wants to dive deeper into what it means to be Chris Jean and her, her alabaster universal self or the gray several local selves. Um, there's a little bit of a mystery there that I want to unravel that <laughs> is fun. It's very fun. Um, and I like how you play with balance because as I imagine your, the vases in space, space doesn't have gravity. So in itself, it's unbalanced. But to say like the two or three legs like holding you, it's a, it's a very clear image. Um, I had a lot of fun with your writing, Christine. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. I'll go. I actually had a visual <sighs> of the outside being the little three-legged vases and then this circle being the colors and this is the alabaster self and this is pulsating back and forth. That's what my, where my mind went in listening to you. So I could just see it. I don't really have any words for it other than movement and but you described your cells as a grayish um color and then the energy the vibrating was colorful so it was like moving from the imbalance of the grayish color to the balance of the vibrant colors and going back and forth in that eventually connecting with the alabaster cell that's that's all thank you patty Thank you, Patty. Christine, would you like to share any feedback? Yes. Um, the colors were, it, it makes sense to me that you're seeing color because the, the higher realms, for lack of a better way to put it, is all about color. That's why our chakras are colored. That's why, you know, under sea life, iridescent and resplendent with color, flowers are color, you know, color is, 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 is God, you know? It's like, it makes sense to me. And you said something that made me really curious about, uh, that to be honest, still more than one local self. And I know what I thought you meant by that, but I don't really know what you meant by that, but that was very um, interesting. So I'm curious what you meant by that. Well, I'll explain in a couple of words. Um, I am still fragmented. Uh, it's probably because I work 18 hours a day and, and, and something else and I don't have a lot of time but I, I am fragmented. I, I have a, a local self uh, who still is very egoic and, and has to do everything myself. I have to be right. I have to be the one. Um, and then there's another egoic self um, that says I'm lyrical and I want to be free and I am just my little egoic self and don't bother me with all this universalist stuff. I'm not speaking seriously, but <laughs> I am, I'm telling you that I don't, I haven't yet rid myself of more than one egoic self. They're still there. It takes time. As Barbara says, you really need to spend the time and uh, effort and you need to spend how much time in meditation and how much time in <clears throat> uh, just dedication. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on it. I just don't have it. So I feel that I'm not 
yet beyond my egoic plural selves. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's uh, kind of what I thought you meant. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Thank you for sharing with us, Jean. Is there anything else that you'd like to say about your writing? No, no. Thank you all. I'm just fine. Um, Christine, would you like to read or would you like me to read? Um, I'll go. I'll go. Um, I truly missed this call and all of you last week. How to begin? I, I feel it would be inauthentic of me not to address here and now in the sacred space with you all that I am struggling with the not enoughs. I know I'm in the right place. There is nowhere I would rather be than here today or on the Tuesday or Thursday calls, but I have parts that are resisting my own evolution. On the calls, it seems as though everyone is in a more transcendent space, literally feeling themselves moving, evolving. And though I delight in this and I am learning from them, I feel behind. I suppose I just need to be patient and keep showing up and have faith that all beings everywhere are evolving and focus on all the many things that I notice changing inside of me. That it's just a part of me and perhaps my experience will be one that that can help others who feel a similar block or opportunity to heal. There is indeed a felt sense that my universal self is guiding me. And as Patty was talking about the two worlds, I thought, yes, two worlds. As an empath, I must constantly choose not to get overwhelmed by what I am seeing around me because it does not serve my friends that I would help to focus on their challenges. Uh, it's so different to look at myself and others as powerful spiritual beings on the brink of manifesting creative ways to heal the earth, people, and animals. Um, um, the people and animals suffering that we truly will have divine abilities and that is what we can or truly do and that is what we can open our hearts to expect rather than the doom and gloom that we are fed I see us hugging strangers tears of joy in our eyes because we are free and the love and compassion we are radiating is palpable to all. And so as Matt Kahn says, these struggling parts that are still suffering at times deserve more love, not less. If I embrace my shadow, then perhaps I heal the great shadow that has loomed over our planet for so long. The microcosm heals the macrocosm. Who is it that says we are gladiators of kindness or something like that? I ask all the cells and my earthly self to receive in their nucleus the loving union with my universal self. Thank you, Christine. That was beautiful. Would you like feedback? Sure. Great. Would anybody like to start us off? Muted. I want to start. Um, again, it's hard for me to hear and see anything without it being a caterpillar butterfly. But <laughs> so, so having said that, I heard you, I heard you in this transition. I heard you speaking from your caterpillar at the beginning and metamorphosis 
into speaking from your butterfly. Um, I think it's maybe important to remember that the whole time the caterpillar is in its caterpillar life, the butterfly's in there. It's <laughs> it's a it's inside the but in the inside the caterpillar waiting to emerge into the butterfly. So that's what I heard you in your writing. I heard you speaking from the caterpillar's life and transition into the butterfly. You might want to read that more than just once, just to see how you know your butterfly's in there because you spoke from it. It's just getting through the actual metamorphosis to release the body. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that inspires some, some feedback from me. Uh, I, through your writing, uh, the first part, I'm struggling with the not enoughs. Aren't we all? <laughs> Ooh. Um, and then you raise to uh, perhaps my experience will be one that helps others, you know? And so you take that and you're like, well, I can, I can turn this around maybe, you know? And then uh, your confidence in the visualization you have for the future of, I see us hugging strangers and tears with, joys in our, with joy in our eyes because we're free, you know? Uh, you have all of that inside of yourself and it's so beautiful. And uh, I see that voice growing and I see it as a powerful thing. And your vision for like what is and what's become, I see it manifesting in this like, well, maybe my experience can help others, you know, because it so can, it so will. There's someone else out there thinking that they're not enough. And to have you even just to write this down and become aware of it and be like, you know, I am, but maybe the struggle that I'm going through will allow someone else to speak louder. Like that's, that's big in itself. And I see that bravery and that strength and I appreciate you for it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, Ali, I absolutely say ditto to that, but I want to add the inclusion of animals more than once which is extremely important to me, and obviously it is to, they are to Christine. Um, animals are very, very important in your life and in my life, and I'm so happy that you included them. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, I like that you started out with sort of you're not enough, and then, you know, like everybody said, you just blossomed into... Um, your truth into becoming part of that universal self, even though you've to some degree felt as though you weren't getting it and you weren't understanding and you weren't good enough and all that, yet you spoke it so elegantly and everything that everybody said and then some. And I, a couple of phrases people didn't mention was um, gladiator of kindness. And I see that as that is you, you're a gladiator of kindness. And, and just loving, you talked about loving the union with your universal self. So um, I think that, that on the Tuesday night calls, it can be kind of, um, kind of feeling like you're not where everybody else is. On the other hand, if you look at the number of people responding compared to the number of people that are there, I think everybody is where they need to be and you're blossoming even though you may not see it at first. So. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to say about your writing, Christine, or the experience? I truly can say that it was trying to match with the frequency 
of you all that helped me on the page. I, I mean that. Um, so it was very powerful, our little group. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, Could I add a couple of words, Ali? Yes, go for it. Um, Christine, I absolutely love the fact that you were awakened the other night from your bed, or perhaps not awakened, but disturbed, and came on line and looked so beautiful, and uh, you covered yourself. You just were wonderful. You were full of confidence. And um, I mean, I didn't, that didn't go past me. You were absolutely, you could be an actress. You were wonderful. So please take that to heart. And if you have a chance to see it, go look at it because you look wonderful. If oh, you haven't no. seen it, you look wonderful growing out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Do we just, we go on the site and, and well, I'll figure it out. Um, I can, Thank if you, you stay online, I might be able to give you some advice for that. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'll enter into mine. I call forth the image of my full potential self incarnate, my whole being, 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 being. My will echoes through the vastness of time, like a child shouting into the dark depths of a cave. What this cave holds, I do not know. Collecting pieces from stories and past experiences, the mind starts to make assumptions. Dirt, bats, stalactites, a bear. <laughs> through imagination, the reality of this cave is created, what it means to be this cave without ever going deeper into it. This for some is okay, but I am a spurlunker, a cave diver. I will unravel the mystery through my imaginal realm and my personal experience. I will unravel the unknown behind my full potential self incarnate, my whole self, for she is I and I am she. To imagine the lives I may touch, the happiness and thoughtfulness that could be spread, the smiles and hugs to be shared. And then, so important, integrate this imaginal realm with my personal experience, the lives I have touched, happiness and thoughtfulness I have spread, and smiles and hugs that I have already shared. And to continue, forwards or backwards, I am my present self, my past self, my future self, and we shake hands with one another and are, allow ourselves to be guided into our full potential self incarnates, our, our or my whole self. And I would like feedback. I'll yeah. Go. It, okay, go ahead. You can go. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, I like the analogy of the cave. I've not, that image has never come to me before. So I could see how the stories we tell could be the echo. You say something and then it echoes kind of like that game of whatever that game is. Um, <laughs> it's how long is that? By the time it gets to the end, it's not the same story. That was the mind my, my mind went when you said that. And then your future self, um, your imaginative self, imaginary life, hugs and love and all of that. And then I saw, that was like 
on one side and the cave was on the other side and you were in the middle pulling those two together. Okay, pulling those two together and merging them kind of like dual personality. The idea of multiple personality is bringing, merging all of those personalities together. So dual personality, merging them for you to be a higher self than either one of those could do on their own without each other. So that was my visual. I don't know why today's everything is visual. Too bad I can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> As a side note, I thought your uh, drawing of Chris Jean's picture was exactly what I was thinking in my head too. So I think you can draw, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Patty. Yeah, I can go next. Um, I, I too like the, the cave analogy. And then you had some special word for cave diver. I never heard that before, so I didn't write it down because I didn't think I could spell it. So I, th I thought that was the whole analogy of the cave was great. And then all of the pieces of the cave um, and um, unraveling the unknown. She is I and I am she. And um, then talking about your present, your past, and your potential, and then becoming your whole self. So that was a, a great, um, the cave was a great analogy visual. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I'll go. Okay. Um. So when you were describing all the things in the cave, and I thought, it's really good imagery. And I thought, where are the crystals? And I just thought, you are the crystal. Uh, you were the crystal in that cave. <laughs> you were the one who's holding the memory and the, like the Akashic records. You are that crystal. And, um, and then I will unravel the unknown behind my full potential self. Like unraveling it, it's it's like Patty's butterfly, you know. You're mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and your past, present, and future self all shaking hands. I love that. <laughs> I love that because continuity is so important. And and. Uh, that, that that line of there's no time you know that it's just very very con complete you know um and stepping into your imaginary self i wholeheartedly encourage you to keep doing that your imagination is amazing and what is for lunker is that the word <laughs> <laughs> it's someone who dives and explores caves. <laughs> oh, yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for that. That uh, that was touching. Thank you. Chris Jean, would you like to say anything? Oh, hi, Ali. Yes, I got this for Lanka. Um, is it only someone who dives in caves or is it also someone who might go diving for octopus or <laughs> divers? I think that it includes any sort of deep cave. So it could be if the uh, deep sea sort of spurlunking okay. as well, but I have not imagined it like that before. I, I love that. Um, child, dark cave. Don't know. Don't not. Oh, and stalactites. That image is um, scary to me. I, I don't know that it's, you were coming from a place of fear, but it's scary to me. And unfortunately, I couldn't get away from the uh, soccer team in the, in the caves of Thailand. I'm, I'm sorry, because that isn't what you had in mind. Isn't it wonderful that they all cut out 
<laughs> except for that one poor man. Um, but the imaginal realm uh, is who you really are. I mean, you imagine, you imagine realms and um, the caves. I mean, just it's just great. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. And I appreciate whatever arises for you. So it, with it matching to a current event, I, I see that. And it, that's like another anchor into like the realm of reality in the writing. And so I appreciate that as a part of your feedback. Um, I, it, there was, uh, when I was going into it, uh, I thought I was going to write about my uh, moving into my one bedroom <laughs> and then I ended up writing about a, a cave. <laughs> I wonder if there's some metaphor there. <laughs> um, so there could have, there was definitely some underlining of fear as well, which Christine picked up on. Uh, but also uh, it was really nice to have reiterated uh, the imaginal self and living into it and being a crystal in the cave and sort of like that bright shining uh, feeling behind it. It feels very encouraging. So thank you for holding me in this space today. <laughs> um, with that, uh, we're done a little bit earlier today. That's cool. Uh, if you guys want to do anything, share any appreciations, that sort of thing. Otherwise, we'll close out with a bow. I would and like to say something to Christine. Mm. Um, your analogy of her being the crystal was powerful. And so I just want to say that where you feel yourself to be on Tuesday night, I understand that that was a very deep connection that you made. So I don't think you're as far off as you might think you are on the Tuesday night. If you're not in a small group, you might want to try to find a small group because that's where I'm really finding a connection and a support to be who I am in my old world, in my world. So it's allowing me to make that transition and um, it's very important in my life right now. So something that, to be able to interact with people who hear and understand and speak the same language is very helpful. Yeah, I would reiterate Thank that. Pa Patty and yes. I are in the same group. So mm -hmm. we, um, we meet in Zoom every other week. And, and it's just such um, a great synergy that it seems like we're um, very often going through similar things at the same time. So it just helps. Um, it helps everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, I, I wrote to Lisa, uh, Sherwood suggested, I wrote to Lisa and she's getting back to me. That, yeah, I'm looking for a group. I would love that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay, well, let's take a final bow. Thank you for consistently meeting this space with presence and openness and awareness. It's always really lovely to write with you guys. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. This is a great group. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful time. <laughs> Please give best, best regards and recovery. Yes. Christine. Yeah. yeah. I'll pass it along. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.